Hail and hello, everyone. Welcome to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, a Midgard Musings production. Join me, Jesse, your host, as we discuss random heathen-related topics and various other things in an attempt to find where, if any, heathen worldviews can be applied. You can support this podcast by clicking on the Linktree link in the description or show notes. You can also follow me on all of my social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and become a patron on Patreon. Join me every Thursday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Central on all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and many, many. you wish to have your voice heard on the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast, you can dial in to 615-671-9832. Thank you all once again for listening to the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Enjoy and hail to you all. All right, folks. Hail and welcome back to uh, another episode of the Random Heathen Ramblings podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in today. This is going to be a, a fun episode. I really hope so, at least. Uh, we've got Dingo coming on. You know him from previous episodes. He is our tribe's uh, Gothi and a very near and dear friend of mine, a brother of mine, I would say, and have said, and will continue to say. Um, <clears throat> but we're going to be talking today um, or covering a question that um, Blake, also known as the uh, Skaldic Works, he's got a YouTube channel and an uh, Instagram page. He actually, uh, notified me earlier this week that he's uploaded some content so if you guys haven't checked him out yet on his youtube channel the link for his uh information is going to be in the show notes and in the description um, of this podcast so wherever you're taking this in at whether it's on the youtube premiere or watching on spotify or any of the other uh podcast platforms and be sure to check out what scalded works is doing but uh we are going to be bringing in dingo to kind of cover a little bit of what we talked about last week um, but also to really dive into a question that Blake has um, concerning when you're ritual space or when you're uh, conducting some sort of a ritual, whether it be bloat or, or something, when it's unexpectedly and unannouncedly dis- uh, disturbed in some sort of way and some things that might could happen. I think Dingo's got some interesting insight on that. So we're going to bring him in today to talk about that and some other things. Uh, so sit back, relax, enjoy the show. Let's welcome in Dingo. So yes, 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 yes. Welcome back to the podcast, my brother Dingo. What's going on, man? What's it's been up? a while. Yeah. You know, I feel like uh, uh, I, I think about this often, and I feel like it would be great to have you on a regular rotation here. Because our, our conversations always lead into some pretty cool things, man. And I feel like the the listeners and the viewers would would really like it um, to have like a, a guest on a regular occasion, like a like a, a standing guest at all times. I mean, maybe we bring some other people in, but yeah, maybe we'll see how that works. But uh, yeah, I mean, like when there was that there was that other thing that we were talking about that, you know, life's been chaotic for me lately. Obviously. Oh, yeah. Yep. There's there's a lot yeah, of that I'm going very around. Interested in doing that. Well, good. I'm, I'm interested in it as well. And for anybody listening and, and, you know, watching or whatever, wondering, what are we talking about? You'll just have to wait. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Skulkin shirt. Yes, it is. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. I saw it. I, I did laundry, like whatever it was, uh, you know, weeks ago. And I'm like, I didn't put this shirt away. And I'm like, okay, that's what, that's what the garb will be today. It's going to be Skulkin. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I had to do a shout out on that one. Goodness. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody in the Middle Tennessee area who's anybody who's been in the music scene for like, I don't know, the last couple of decades knows who Skulkin is. Yeah, pretty much. Mike Laster and Schizo and those guys, man, like Lamb Chop. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> Good like, dudes right there. When I, when I worked at Demises, right? Yeah. 
Skulkin was a name on the schedule. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. I remember you telling me that. It wasn't my. That was what? Oh, it was five, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's about the year that I moved to the state of Tennessee. I was in like yeah. West Tennessee area. So I missed all of like the really cool local bands that were like blowing up and doing a, doing a thing at the time. And I learned about them much later on because of, because of, because of uh, Vanessa, you know? Yeah. But, um, so yeah, we got it's a good like show. Than, like I've had online interactions about like, they're like, dude, Tony Danza, the, mm-hmm. the greatest and everything. And it's like, I, I was standing, that guy to me. Like, <laughs> I was standing in line to donate plasma one day and I was wearing this exact <laughs> shirt, right? I was wearing this exact shirt and the guy did it kind of like you did. He's like, is that a Skulkin shirt? And I go, yeah, what do you know about that? He's like, oh, man, dude, I love those guys. He said, I used to play in a band from around here. You might have heard of them. And I go, uh, really, which one? He goes, Tony Danza. And I was like, wait, you too? I'm like, they had like 37 different band members that they rotated between, you know? <laughs> like everybody in, in this area was in uh, I, I think the Tony Danza. the Battle Pass were the only people that weren't in that band. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And I miss them too. Like I never got to see them, but everybody, everybody that I oh, talked man, to that man. ever says anything about them was like, they were the shit. Well, it was, it was sad to the last, I think it was the last time I saw them. They, they were headlining and everybody left. And it was like, the crowd was like five people. Ouch. It was an amazing show. That like, hurts. That hurts to hear. I mean, like I've been at those yeah. shows where the headliner comes on and everybody that was there, like 50 some odd people packed into like, you remember, um, you remember that, uh, what was it, TFG in Murfreesboro? Remember that? Or, or autograph yeah. even. It was like just this, like, it was like a closet almost, or, or just a, you know, a storage room that people were packed into. And when the headliner, whoever it was, would come on, like everybody left or dipped out. And I'm like, that's sorry as hell, man. Like these people waited hours to play their 30, 45 minute set. And then you guys just vamp out on them like that. That's, that's demoralizing to say the least, I would think. Yeah. I mean, uh, we ran into that with battle path a lot. And so like, if they were, well, you guys sucked band, anyway, so that doesn't matter. I mean, of course. <laughs> well, and, that, and that's, that's my point. Like we headlined because no, everybody was gone anyway. So whatever. <laughs> but like really they're like the touring band were like you guys go on second because people are going to bounce i promise you and that's not fair to you guys you wow know? that's that's solid that's how that's how nashville murfreesboro ended up being that's how the scene was man yeah but um yeah we uh we got a good show lined up i think today um but before i get into this i wanted to just like totally off topic i was watching something a minute ago and it was like dudes making different whiskey and bourbon recipes. And I, and I, and I know that this would pique your interest specifically because they were making stuff like old fashions and Manhattans and, and stuff that, that include whiskey as the, as the alcoholic ingredient. Right. So they get to a rusty nail, which is a, which is Scotch whiskey and Drambuie, not, you know, like, a, not like a bourbon or a rye. It's made with right. Scotch whiskey, and I swear to you, dude, I, I about screamed at my phone because I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they were using their Scotch that they were using was was Ardbeg, and I'm like, how dare you use Ardbeg oh, in a rusty nail? Like you could go with Johnny Walker, you could go with anything else, and there and there they are just pouring in a couple of ounces of, of of Ardbeg into the into the rusty nail, and I'm like, it, it's probably good, but it's also insulting to me that you would use like yeah. such a good eyelay. And, and the guys uh, that were pouring it were like, you know, the name names, but I, I, I used to know someone that would that chased a 16 year old single malt with Coke. Oh, <laughs> and I, 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 I didn't mm. know whether to cry or be bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> do, we, do you still associate with such an individual? <laughs> or have they been moved? <laughs> oh. Oh. Chasing so that did probably it... tells you, but I'm not naming names. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we might have to have a talk with them one of these days. And then, and then, and then yeah. But man, I don't know. That just that kind of like one of those, you know, what really grinds my gears kind of moments, you know, oh, yeah. is is when they use single malts and like decent. And he's going over here. He's he's pouring. He's like, you know, the characteristics of Scotch. 
or that they're really smoky. I'm like, that's like one variety that, that that's the kind oh, of yeah. scotch that it is. Like you talk about space sides or highlands and, and, and lowland scotches, like those aren't smoky at all. And he's like, Oh, the characteristics oh, of yeah. scotch. I'm like, what are you even talking car- That's an eye lay that you're pouring right there. If you think it's smoky, then it's an eye lay, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, Matt, my recommend Highland Park Herald, like that stuff mm. tasted like grapes and like, raisins and plums i wish we could get some of that here there is still there is still i think it's an 18 year sweet yeah i I think there's still like an 18 it's either a 15 year or an 18 year and i can't remember what it is that they sell here in the states but it's like 120 125 bucks for for you know a a a bottle of it and i'm like man one of these days and i keep looking at it every time i walk in the store they got like one or two left on the shelves i'm like one of these days i'm going to go in there it's going to be gone and i'm going to miss my chance i'm just hoping against all hope that they keep it on the shelf for long enough because it's uh it's got like i don't know they were they advertise it and it's not the it's not the the herald it's i forget which one it is but it's got like something to do with like apples or pineapples or something it's like sounds really mm. exotic but yeah highland park is is a good well, the good herald, distillery um, uh one of patrick's ex-girlfriends um went to europe <clears throat> Mm-hmm. And that was like she had to buy it there. Yeah, like it wasn't available at all. I don't know if it is now, but at least then you mm-hmm. couldn't even get it in the U.S. at all. That's crazy. I think they've started maybe to open up, but I think with everything else too, you know, uh, distributing, uh, especially from these distilleries that are like based in Europe, like they're shipping. They're they're probably they're getting murdered on shipping. I'm sure. Um, cost and everything going up is the oh, way they yeah. are. You know, so it's probably not even an option for a lot of them. But anyway, I just had yeah, to throw I mean, that little bit you in know, there. You know my profession, so it's like, yeah, right, like, yeah. You know, it probably better than anybody. You know, just like those numbers. <laughs> people are mad about cognac not being around, but it's like, dude, it's sitting in the dock. Like, I, yeah, I can't do anything. We can't do it. Our distributors can't even do anything about that. Like, it's right. It is what it is. <laughs> So CKS, it is what it is, right? right? But anywho, now that we're done talking about you know awesome Middle Tennessee bands and 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 the <laughs> of the uh, the aberration of of blending single malt scotches with your cocktails, um, let's get to the real subject at hand. Uh, as I mentioned in the intro, uh, Scaldic Scaldic Works. Uh, it's got a YouTube channel. It's got an Instagram account. Uh, his information is going to be linked in the description and in the show notes. Um, he hasn't, at least up to this point, I think, uploaded a lot of content, but he did let me know earlier this week that he just uploaded something. So um, I think he's playing a, uh, is it a, 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 and I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but a tala harp, tala, tala harp. It's, it's, it's like that Nordic, you know, stringed instrument that looks like a violin, but sounds like a mm, mm, okay. Really, really off, off, not off key, but you know, the really droning kind of yarning sound, I guess. I don't know, but I think it's a Tiala harp or, or something like that. Anyway, he's playing that on his most recent video. So, everybody that's you know tuned in last week and got the first half of uh, his question, um, or the first half of what we were going to answer as a question, check that out. This week, the second part of his um, email that he sent me includes a question that I think. Dingo here will probably have a, a a good little bit of insight on, or at least a good story to tell about it. So his question is, when it comes to uh, this, kind of falls in line with his his question about destroying altar objects or or ritual um, tools after they've no longer served, you know, their purpose in the profane space and and whatnot. His second question has to do with interrupted ritual spaces. So his question reads that. Um, what is the appropriate action needed to be taken if someone breaks or interrupts your sacred space that you've made for a ritual? Uh, with an example being like if you're outdoors and local law enforcement, police officers, game wardens, uh, park rangers, etc., approach you mid ritual. You know, you guys are doing your thing, you're in the middle of it, and then you get interrupted. Um, or someone maybe just passes by you and you know, speaks to you or engages with you in some way um, in the middle of a ritual and uh, or any other sort of like spiritual experience, whether it be, you know, personal meditation or anything like that. Their intent, of course, not being to intentionally interrupt you, but because of their actions, it 
kind of like breaks the flow of things or, or it like interrupts the, the process. Yeah. And so his question is, you know, when, when someone does that, um, and then he even goes to says, or someone that does intentionally interrupt a ritual or bloat with the intent of doing so. Now, I think if we're going to answer this question, he's, he's saying about, you know, what to do when it happens unintentionally. And he's also goes to talking about what to do when it is intentional. And I think there's two different angles to take on that. What do you say? What do you do? He said it's never happened to him, but he kind of wants to be prepared um, for when or if that happens. So let's, I think, take it as a, like, well, let's kind of dissect it a little bit and let's, let's maybe take it for the approach of if it happens unintentionally what would be the appropriate action. And I, I want to start off with Dingo with you um, sharing something about that, that we, I think talked yeah, to I a little mean, bit. Uh, I, I have experienced that um, with my old group and Patrick, who's been on the show before our law speaker. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it was, it was my ritual there. And I was in the North gate and this property that we were on, the north was facing like the driveway and the road and like it's in the country i think i've driven you by there before if we've gone the back way through those lands and yeah, then, yeah it, for it's sure in the country but not exactly it's not like in the country where our vey is where like there's just woods mm -hmm. you know like there's a highway next to it and all that so it's, it's not really like secluded. It's more kind of like off to the side. Um, and we still have no idea who this guy was, but I was, I don't, I don't remember what I was doing that night, but concentration was immediately broken. And this guy walks up, I want to say he had a white hoodie on. This was like fall somewhere around that time. And I think it was Tyler or Peter, maybe. I don't remember what name, but he, like, he was looking for this guy. And he was very obviously at the wrong house. <laughs> I was like mid-ritual at the north side of the place. And as we had a hinge set up there, um, you know, with the cardinal directions and cross quarters and all of that. And... You know, he just walks up and he's like, hey, is Peter around or whatever the guy's name was? And Patrick just walks up holding a ritual dagger in his hand and just stares at the guy coldly and blankly. That that Taurus look that we've talked about with Patrick where he just goes like. Oh, yeah, I've seen that look flat. Yep. And dude was just like, I, I, I think I have the wrong house. Yeah. I'm sorry. And I don't really <laughs> remember anybody saying anything. Huh. It just scared the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he just turned around and like left. He's so the, sit the situation kind of uh, <laughs> handled itself in that way. Well, right, with some of your, right. you know, it, yeah, like you, you had something to do about it, but, you know, it wasn't like he quickly realized I am at the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> and I'm sorry. And he, and he made it known like this is, not what I intended for. <laughs> right. um, yeah. But so like what happened yeah. after, what happened after that? Like it interrupted well, I mean, like, the ritual, you know, so yeah, concentration was completely broken, you know, and I'm like, okay. So what do you do? You, you just regroup, regroup, right? <laughs> yeah. But we, mm. like, we all kind of had a laugh about it in a way. Cause this poor guy was just mm. like terrified. Like he, 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 he had that scared look in his eyes, you know, like, right. Right. <laughs> we weren't trying that. It's just like he just walked into that. So there was a reason Patrick had the the athame, you know, like. Oh, I'm sure he was in that. Thing. Yeah, he was in that ritual state of mind, too. And then, you know, when a, yeah. and an outsider or outside influence steps in unintentionally like that, like it's like, excuse me, you know, yeah. I mean. I mean, Patrick, what? and that was Patrick's job was he was like a warden or, a, mm -hmm. you know, his job was to make sure that nothing interfered with what I was doing because it was an individual yeah. thing for me. We did a lot of that in that group where we had individual work with the others as protection, so to speak. Yeah. So, um, 
So yeah, that's really the only time that's ever happened to me. I mean, um, Arve is where I've been practicing for. Yeah. Well, even back then as well, but exclusively for a long time now. I think there's and, something, you know, I mean, I, and that's a point that I really wanted to make on this is it's like, I wouldn't do, especially if it's a major ritual, I wouldn't do it in a public place. I would do it in a place that that will not happen. Yeah. I, th I think you bring up a really good point because that's kind of what I was about to say. I said, I think there's something to be said about where your sacred space is. And I know that a lot of modern heathens and, and, and modern pagans in general nowadays find the challenge of creating sacred space in places where they don't think that they have enough space. Um, some of the, you know, suburban heathens, I think Eric Shervin on the Ravens call, he did a video about that, you know, um, where you're, you're kind of confined to a, a inner city or, or an apartment. And I mean, I can tell you right now, folks, like where I live is not very remote by any means, but the spaces that well, have been set most of the time. Right. Yeah. I mean, we, we, yeah. Right. So you like, you got an apartment and I live in a house that has, you know, houses next to it, you know, it's a mobile home. And so we're uh, kind of in a, in a, in a similar situation with maybe just a little bit less grass, <laughs> you know, meaning right. you and I, you know what I'm saying? But nonetheless, right. Sacred space can be uh, set up and defined to, to whatever degree. Now, when we do go out to like the Vey out um, where we're talking about here, I'm not going to say out in the woods, like that's a fortunate part that we have to, to have it set secluded and set aside to the point where when we're there and when we're doing our thing, nobody, if, like if anybody just happens to walk up on that, like something's seriously wrong. Like if you just stumbled across, across us out there, yeah. like you are it's seriously lost and yeah, yeah, right. Like you're, you're way out of line. So Fortunately, we've not had that to happen either, but I feel like what you were saying is like anything major like that, find a space that's secluded or, or do something that's not public, not in like a park or, or state land or something that where just anybody could potentially walk up because it is, it's, it's, it's available to the public and you just don't know when you're going to plan to do something when someone else might just happen to show up. So it's probably best to reserve such activities to be done in space where you are able to at least control the environment because when you talk about whatever ritual it is you know i mean we, we could dissect that down to a lot of things you know what, what what kind of ritual are we talking about here but nonetheless it's still something that you're entering into with the intent and for a purpose and so when when that aura gets disrupted or when when like your ritual state of mind gets interrupted it, it does it it shakes things up to the point where it's like well shit now i gotta start all over again in a way because you don't and it is psychologically <laughs> jarring when that happens oh yeah yeah i can i can i can i can agree with that for sure you know um so you know maybe for yeah, the you know if you're doing something simple like a simple offering or something like that blessing simple blessing right you know you can probably do that at a, at a state park or like you know i mean yeah. uh at patrick and i for example uh, we've done rituals uh, in radnor uh -huh. uh, we went off trail mm -hmm. you're not supposed to right what are they gonna do that, that by random <laughs> hikers but we we went off trail and did the things you know but it was like a simple quick kind of thing if you're doing something gravity of gravity you need a, a safe space mm. and you know like yeah i guess to answer that question in our case you know like okay so like what if a police officer showed up like where's where's the warrant mm. you're on private property for basically mm. no reason what's the deal you know yeah so but as I far could, as like how to react to it, it depends on who it is and where you are. You know? Yeah, the situation kind of dictates the response in a way, or the environment would dictate. Because I feel like, you know, if you're going to go out to, to public land, right, whether it's a state reserve or, or a public park, 
or do something like that. I mean, you are, you're opening yourself up to the possibility of anybody and everybody approaching you for whatever reason, questions, right? Uh, oh, what are you doing? Or, you, you know, like you say, if it's and state if land and you're- in space in a place that's public. How do you even- the, yeah. yeah, like the barriers and everything, the, 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 the protection side of it is- Right. Tricky, because even if you set something up, say the week before, other energies have- Yeah trampled through that place and right it may not be as closed off as you think mm -hmm. yeah and that goes back to really some some re some really old ways thinking of barriers boundaries land claiming land taking how things were done in in old times to 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 set those barriers and to set those boundaries because even though the concept of like the Innen Garden, Newton Garden was, it may not be particularly old ways heathenry, right? Like it's a pretty modern construct, I think, of thinking right. of the inner versus the outer. But the 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 way that the worldviews of of arch heathens were at the time is they had that understanding of what's within is safe and sacred, and what's without is wild and dangerous. Like there was that clear villages were set up that way, right? There was a fence row. There was there was barriers between the in and the out so understanding well, those barriers was, in those days stumbled across it it'd be like they already either knew what you were doing oh yeah or they'd be like <laughs> leave them alone right yeah definitely and it that mutual respect back then we, of course we don't have that now but you know <laughs> yeah you know so i mean i don't know but like i i think that you know with what scarlet works is 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 asking i think again it depends on the situation and it depends on the space what i think we're collectively agreeing on right now you and i is you know reserve like hardcore uh rituals that are of, of any sort of gravity of any sort of importance reserve that to space that you can control and have some control over it. even if it's a corner of the room or i was gonna say even if it has to be in your own home yeah that's, yeah it's safer for you and i think you're gonna get a better result out of it because you even if you you know like don't have outside interference if you're in public there's that distraction yeah the it's, there's inherent exactly there's so much going on. I mean, a plane could fly over, you know, just whatever, you know, who knows? Right. Um, and uh, so like I think the, that. Like the damn dog at our vet. <laughs> it sounds yeah. like he's dying all the time. Sound like a donkey. <laughs> yeah, that guy. That guy. <laughs> We're trying to do something real serious and all of a sudden. Like, yeah. <laughs> In Don Quixote, you know, pipe it down, <laughs> keep it down over here. You know, like we're trying to do some things. <laughs> that guy cracks me up though. He's almost like a staple though. It's like, it's like that white noise yeah, in the we background. Say, we've kind of become used to that guy now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, he's just over here, you know, hollering about whatever, you know. <laughs> or, you know, like, uh, I guess another funny story I would have about a ritual being interrupted is, um, <laughs> So uh, with, with the second group that I was in, which was kind of an evolution of the first one, um, it was at the Vey where we practice now. And it was a, um, uh, it was some kind of rebirth ceremony. And uh, I don't remember the ins and outs of it. Uh, and I'm not gonna name names, um, yeah. but it was like, a minute and a half into it and everybody's in their positions everything's locked down everything's groovy everybody's in the zone and he started his chant like he was about like he opened his mouth to start saying whatever he was gonna say and then the guy next to him just out of nowhere you hear <laughs> And we all just busted out loud. Like ritual was ruined in that moment. It's like, did you really just fart at the beginning of my ritual? Oh, dude? <laughs> dude. You kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> so it's not always outside interference. It can be inside as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's comical. Yeah. I did. What did you just do? You know, 
we washed, we cleansed, we did everything to prepare for this. And then you go and break wind on us like that? Like, come on. Yeah, you're over there shit Show some. Beast, okay? What's wrong with you, man? <laughs> <laughs> Should be the new deck Dectris track, man. Shitting in the East Gate. <laughs> there you go doesn't sound like a terrible time but uh yeah man it'll be, so it'll like it'll be a fun noise ambient and never, it'll be yeah made all of fart noises noise being the uh the operative word here you know butt noises <laughs> butt noises volume one <laughs> butt trumpets so yeah, like I mean, unintentional, right? It's an accident. Do accidents happen? Like, I mean, you shit your pants in the middle of ritual. Hey, whoops! Like it's in a similar way. I mean, if you're if you're going to venture off into public accessible areas and do anything of of a ritualistic nature, like just realize what you're kind of opening yourself up to the possibility of. And if it's unintentional, and if it's an ap apologetic, right? And then they're inquisitive. You know, maybe it's happening for a reason at that point, right? Maybe the yeah. maybe the moment wasn't right for you to get into that space, and now another op opportunity has opened itself up, and it's a learning, uh, a chance to learn or 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 educate somebody who's inquisitive, and who knows what planting that seed might lead into for for them or for you, you know? Well, I mean, I yeah, guess. that that's also a possibility that 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 outside force that comes in, yeah could end up being an integral part of the same yeah. ritual it could be like that plan for it or realize it but you know could be that uh that that stray leaf that gets blown into the web and then now all of a sudden it gets becomes part of the web like, just like you know? the, the saga of little kitty you know like we were mid-ritual mm. and i love that saga yeah and it, it had changed every she was supposed to yeah you know. there was a purpose for that there was, right. it was something that you couldn't plan for it just had to be that way and then she became <clears> like <throat> the biggest part of that ritual that night hmm. you know that's an interesting thing too is that you know the interruption might be part of it that you just don't realize mm -hmm. it could be the ritual itself that guy mm -hmm. that guy that the guy, guy that guy, I don't um, talk to him again one of these days. We'll have a different, <laughs> if we have a different conversation, but yeah. <laughs> I hope so. Because <laughs> that was a whole All lot the... of fling and poo that night. <laughs> oh, yeah. Primal. Primal poo flinging, right? Definitely. Right. But so then with like the intentional, now that, that, that goes into a whole other realm of reaction. You know, if somebody like intentionally comes up to your space to disrupt the the activities that go on, I mean, you've got other folk, you got other things to focus on now at that point. You have to deal with an invader. Um, and I know that what Skaldic Works is talking about are um, probably of, of more along the lines of physical interruptions, you know, people that sort of thing um right but does it but does it or could it not also um encompass the the unseen and where does the 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 pre-ritual ritual right the setting of sacred space the setting of wards the setting of boundaries the the establishing sacred space through specific means you know if you've done that you're almost in you're you're inhibiting any nefarious or baleful forces from interfering and if they get past that then what uh, what you know what do you have to deal with i think i think it gets more into the metaphysical aspects of ritual at that point if, if something or someone intentionally is able to breach sacred space for you then there's uh there's other things to to be focused on uh, aside from just the initial like we got to get rid of you kind of thing um I don't know what you think about that, but yeah, that's like I mean, what first comes to mind to me is like, well, how'd you get in well, to begin I, with? Again, I, I'm not going to name names, but like I've done, I've had people to my sacred space that refuse to come in side the boundaries during ritual. 
because they had that respect for it and almost fear even like, yeah like reverence in a way yeah yeah but also like okay y'all y'all are dealing with some really messed up stuff yeah. <laughs> and i i don't want to be a part of it <laughs> <clears throat> not that we did anything really bad or anything powerful exactly heavy that. energy you know yeah, yeah it was heavy and it wasn't their path it was our group's path but they were a, a guest mm -hmm. and so they respected that yeah and, and i think and, that's you know you know and as far as like unwanted interruptions and that kind of a thing and like especially if ill will is presented um i've worked with some people that if it's in a on private property secluded and in a hmm. a sacred space that is used often and you come in there with ill will you might not be leaving Leave. <laughs> right <laughs> right I mean, that's just kind of one of those I mean, things that may sound uh, terrible but like if the nature of whatever is going on and you know depend it's it's all very situational but it is yeah because i mean possibility, you know yeah I mean, for sure i mean we could be talking about anything from as 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 simple or as basic as like a you know an angry ex-girlfriend or boyfriend or something just rolling in and, and yeah. being drunk and belligerent or you know we could be talking about you know things that i mean we're, we're, we're talking about situational stuff here in, in the state of Tennessee and, you know, castle law is a thing and you have every right to defend your, your keep as it were. Right. So where, where the law touches on stuff like that, like, I mean, the, that, there, there's, there's that whole thing as well. well you know? I mean, I've seen rituals amongst brethren where a hammer was chucked at somebody's head. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty that crazy. Amongst friends. But the ritual was so volatile and wild, yeah. chaotic, dangerous, really, yeah. ultimately. Yeah, that could do some damage. That could do some literal physical damage. And, and you know, and like I, the, those same people, uh, this was before I was in that group, but like uh, that was the, my old, old group. And they had the hinge set up and everything, and everybody had their gate that they corresponded with and were sort of the ruler of the warden of that gate and like say somebody was doing a Loki ritual um, your gate might get peed on <laughs> <laughs> you know like, yeah. it, it depends on the ritual it depends on the location the circumstance all of it you know but basically there's it's infinite possibilities on how to approach that yeah like there's almost no one set answer to this kind of question because of again the right. situations that that we could be talking about potentially talking about i mean there's probably even stuff that you know would venture into the realm of like i don't really want to go there i don't want to talk about that because that's something else you know entirely but i think as a general rule right like we understand like ritual and 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 doing anything like stuff like this is it's it's ch it's church for us you know what i'm saying like we're we're entering a space that is sacred or we're setting a space that is sacred so it, it, you know for people that maybe just aren't unfamiliar with things almost everybody nowadays can can at least relate to you know sacred ground you know you don't do certain things inside of a church or whatever and it there, there's 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 some parts of this pagan path that that correlates to that mindset you know we may not be contained into inside of four walls or a building but this canopy of trees is our cathedral this mound of stones is our altar this grove or whatever is our sanctuary it's it's it there, there's equivalence and there's comparisons that you can make so it's like just don't be a don't be an asshole right like yeah, I was gonna say, you know, like, be respectful for any for any outside person. Yeah, just show respect and you know, like uh, midsummer, right? Like, don't piss on the ancestral tree. It could be very mm. bad for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and there's that whole thing too, right? I mean, like when you talk like, about 
you know, when we, when we talk about like, well, what can we, you know, what should be done, what action should be taken, you may not have to do anything just because of the energy that is tied to that land, the, the things that are connected to those roots and that whole system, everything around there, like anything that comes ill against that, they could just be doing it to themselves. And they, they may find themselves in a, in, a, in a pretty bad situation themselves for doing something like that. You may not have to actively respond in any sort of way. It's, it's like, well, you, you dug your own grave at that point for disrupting right. something sacred, right? Like, that's a thing. That's a thing too, I feel. So yeah, um, because to outside people have respect. To inside people, <clears throat> make sure everything's secure. Yeah. You know? And that's a large part. And that's you know, what I love. You have to think of it like a, a prison in a way, you know, like, it, it, like you got to have the locks, you got to have the gates shut, you got to have like guards in place. You, you have to protect. Got to do your security checks. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're dealing with volatile energies. Yeah. <laughs> And that's what I've loved about you know, don't, don't don't be going and doing like Odin rituals in like a public park because it's probably gonna turn out bad for you and other people. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to bring that madness into a public <laughs> place. And if you do it right, you're not going to be in the right headspace. You know, and like say a police officer shows up, if you're doing that ritual correctly, you don't care who or what they are, right. you may just attack. Right. And you could ruin your whole life. You could end your own life. You know what I mean? So I, I guess that would be my biggest thing uh, on, a, on a practicing level of you have to make sure where you are is safe and protected. Period. I would, I would concur with that but physically sure sure and that's one of the greatest things about that i love with um our space you know and in the space that i become um you know our vey is we don't just you know plan something whether it be you know an annual like i've been i've been talking about in some of the previous episodes about seager bloat coming up mm -hmm. next month we're not just rolling up in there that Friday night and, and doing ritual or whatever, we're actually going out ahead of time this coming weekend. Right. So when this podcast airs in a few days from now, we're going out there to not just prepare the land physically, but to prepare it for what's to come. Like we're, we're doing our pre ritual ritual. And that's what I love about it is that we have that methodology behind it. We don't just roll in there and be like, Oh, it's that time of year again. Let's just do it. Like we go in there and we, we, First of all, reacquaint ourselves with the Vaitir that are there because it's it's intermittent, at least the time for a lot of us to be there. Maybe not so much you, but it's very intermittent when I'm there and we're well, you know, and out there. It, it changes so much. Land. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's almost like you have to be like knock on the door when you come in, and be like, "Hey guys, remember me?" You know, like I'm here again. It's it's like familiar, but also recognizing that it is every ever changing. That, oh shit, you're new. Right. <laughs> yep. Yep. I've been out there for what 30, 34 years now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I mean, whenever I approach that space, I always do so with, and I'm, and I'm a welcome presence there, you know, but I always go in there as like kind of just cautionary as like, it's me again, you know, remember me? You know, kind of like when you see an old dog, right, that you haven't seen for a while, you let them sniff around, yeah. re reacquaint themselves with the scent, you know, um, that sort of thing. And that's that's what I love about our Sometimes our they'll group. lick your face and sometimes they'll growl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just a, a quick reminder, wait a minute, what about you? There's something about you. Oh, yeah. You know, and uh, so, we, you know, when you're dealing with stuff like that, like that's a whole different dynamic, you know, we're, we're talking something about very, we're actually talking some about something very specific to, to our tribal practices. And that has actually something that has grown very organically for us, but it has become something that we've adopted as our, uh, you know, tribe uh, tradition. And that may not be the same thing for the next person or the next people that listen or watch or, or think about it, but something to consider, you know. Don't just uh, don't just approach ritual as as anything cavalier, 
right? Approach it with the right mentality of reverence and, and recognizing that you are trying to connect with the sacred. It's not about the spirits that, that exist within you and the profane. When you, when you engage in, in any sort of ritual with the sacred, like that's, that's on another level of things and, and connecting with that energy uh, takes some dedicated and diligent and, and methodical work. I feel absolutely, you know, it's, I've, it's, I've had rituals that have, have taken like two years mm -hmm. to prepare and like mm -hmm. things would happen to me during that. Like, it, it's something is weird. Patrick and I have talked about this a lot before. Of, like <clears throat> the ritual lasts 30 minutes, but it took two years to get there. Yeah. And the, that 30 minutes, like by the time you get to that point, it's almost just like ceremonial like it yeah. it's almost irrelevant yeah <laughs> because it's about that two year process of yep. putting yourself in that mindset and and preparing whatever you need your tools or the land or whatever your mind to make the mentality happen, you know yeah and, and like things will happen to you if you're preparing a ritual for that long a time that end up affecting it differently sure. things you didn't expect you know it, it's not at all unlike um he talked about deg tross earlier you know the our um first album um the song earth that took me about i think it was nine months to mix and i mean almost daily but there were like 17 layers, you know, and it took so much time to match up those frequencies and work with it. And it consumed my life for a good part. And like, I had like, I had to, I had to make sure everything was lined up perfectly on those frequencies or it didn't come out like I needed it to sound. You know, and it's, it does, it takes a lot of work. It takes that nitpicking. It's, it's not something, it's never, ever anything that just happens instantly, uh, you know, off the cuff, you know? Like. Yeah. I mean, for, for so much of my like cart hearth cult, what I would call my hearth cult uh, rituals, you know, um, even the very basic of things the, or the most basic or what might seem the most basic of things, uh, I do a lot of resin burning, you know, smoke sessions and stuff. And even the simplest thing of preparing the resin, you know, picking out what I want to use, combining it, placing it in the item that I'm going to burn it. Like it's, it's all very ritualistic for me. You know, I might even sing a song or make up a little chant or something along the way to like, in my own way, you know, make those items that are just by themselves, just simply resin, you know, but that have no, uh, what you want to call magic, whatever, a tied, uh, tied to them or attested to them, but, you know, breathing that life into them or doing that thing, whatever it might be, you know, whether it's a dance or, or a song or a drum or a rattle or something, right. It's, it's like, there's elements of that in, in any sort of ritual, I feel. And with us at the Vey, you know, cutting the wood, clearing the land, walking the property, doing the things that we do like that to me at every point in time that we've done it has always been pivotal for the ritual that leads up to it. And like you say at that point, like when you actually go do the thing, it's just a ceremony or it feels more like ceremony at that point, because yeah. the, the actual ritual of it has, has been lived through, you know, leading up to and including that point. Uh, well, it's something I, I know you've discussed i can't remember if i was on that one or not but um the ritual that we did with um when we did the wicker man mm -hmm. and we had beef stew and everybody stirred the stew yeah before it was eaten everybody had some kind of role in meal prep cutting the wood everyone placed a branch or log in the wicker man everyone held on to it when we were lashing it together to make sure that it would hold up long enough yeah. to burn yep. everyone put something 
in, and that's part of the ritual. That's one of the most important parts of the yeah. ritual is everyone putting their energy into one place. Yeah, and, and actually sure. remembering that that was a cigar bloat. That was cigar bloat. That was last was year's cigar bloat. Cigar yeah, because for Frere, yeah. We did the, yeah. the Frere man, oh, yeah, the Frere yeah, wicker man. man. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. <laughs> the big oak, the Kuyans, as they say, you know? <laughs> yep. yep. You got the cojones? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. You got the cojones and the frijoles and the, all, the, all the oles, I guess, you know? The huevos, you know, everything. So... <laughs> Yeah, that was I, I remember that. And that was that was a very, uh, you know, Im, Im, important part of, of that was just how much everybody like you, your, your literal everyone's literal hands were on it or a part of it. And that's, that's significant. You know, that's significant. And uh, when you put that much energy into something, and when you dedicate that much of the, the time and effort into something, it's like, you know, you, you, you set the standard at that point, you set the expectation and you know, yeah. you're, you're going to be hard pressed to find anything that can interrupt or disturb that because of it's because it's such it's strong like energy. Symbol, you know, like it's it's a, yeah. Everybody's from the same well. Everybody's in, and and yep. it's also that like there there is there's no chieftain, there's no gothi, there's no law speaker, there's no titles, there's no. It, it's all mm -hmm. one. Oh yeah. Yeah, there's times when all of that is important, and there's times when those when those roles are are identified and and recognized, and then there's other times where it's like you throw that shit out the window and you just yeah. live and you just exist and you just be people with each other and you just share it and tie that weird together and you are folk, you know what I mean? You are the people, and well, I like think I that's remember ritual. Like that uh huh. Was, uh, you know, uh -huh. we we were just existing yeah as almost like one singular entity as a tribe yeah yeah the roots just kind of grew in and around and, and and the vines reached around and everything just became collective and one at that point and it didn't matter who it was or what they were called because every, every, everybody does the things you know? we didn't know by we didn't go by name you know what i mean like names were were very surface level yeah. like who the heck needs that you know, we were just him over there and that guy. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, like genuinely, we referred to each other as this guy. Yep. And just like pointed. You know, yep. Like, you over there. And that, you wasn't, know? that wasn't intentional. It just happened that way. You know? No, it, it, it felt very organic and it felt very natural. And that's that's another great point, I think, as we as we get close to wrapping things up on the podcast today is ritual is methodical. And ritual does have a process or whatever to follow, but it shouldn't be something that you force. And if you're in an area that you're almost forced to be so vigilant about the outside world that you can't focus on what you're doing, then is that even the right place and the right space to do it in, you know? Yeah, um, and then and, and maybe reevaluate or rethink your approach to ritual at that point and, and conserve your efforts to be something that is you know isolated and reserved to the space that you can have some governance over to preserve that sacredness because it is it's sacred it's it's sacred space so yeah well you know and even like like in my in my parents place you know like <clears throat> they're not a part of our rituals mm -hmm. But as far as their award, though, they are. Mm -hmm. You know, I, uh, my dad has even said, like, when Kaya go and I go camping out there, you know, Kaya's like, I'm scared that somebody bad is going to come back and get us in our tent. And my dad said, they're going to get ha have to get past me first, baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, uh, yep. <laughs> like, exactly you, know? <laughs> you ain't got to worry about that kaya you know i can hear your dad they're, saying it. they're not a part of the ritual but they are yeah they have That's a role they have a role is, absolutely I mean, yeah i mean it's their land and they protect their land and they in turn protect us if we're on it yeah yeah 
So and that's a, that's a beautiful thing. Or not, the, the, that energy is still placed into all of that. Yeah. 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 It's definitely nothing that's, you know, casual or cavalier about it. I mean, and I think maybe that that is something else to, to consider is, is there, there's nothing just happenstance with, when it comes to ritual, right? Like sometimes you just feel in the moment to do something at a certain space at a certain time. And you, you can't always control that, but for anything that's like structured, ordered, planned in that sort of way, like plan it the right way, do the, do the thing and, and get it to occur in a space that you have that, that level of, of control and somewhat over. So I hope that that, you know, for, for Skull, it works. Um, thank you again for writing in and, uh, and asking that really thought provoking question. And, yeah, you know, for anybody, yeah, it really is. I think, you know, cause a lot of folks out here that listen and watch my stuff and, and other content providers out here, content creators, you know, are, are looking for answers to, to stuff like this, or at least insight to stuff like this. So, you know, our responses, our, our collective, you know, insight on this today is, is, is what we think, you know, so for everybody listening and watching, um, what do you think? Um, you can either write into the podcast, Midgard Musings TN at gmail.com. You can uh, inbox me on Facebook. You can at me on Twitter. Um, you can call into the Midgard Musings hotline, 615-671-9832. Yeah, exactly. Comment in the description below on YouTube. I mean, all the various ways that you guys can engage with this channel, with this podcast, um, your thoughts are, are, are welcome as well. And if you want your voice heard on the podcast, you know, you can call in and we can feature your thoughts and ideas. we got some other really cool content coming up. A lot of people have been writing in uh, lately with some, some really neat things. And I'm looking forward to exploring those and, and maybe, you know, you Dingo or, or others that uh, want to uh, talk about some of this stuff. Cause they are there. There's some really, you know, people put, put thought and put effort into the things that they want to have discussed or talked about. And I feel like it would be doing them an injustice if we didn't return, you know, in a response with, with the same level of diligence. So even though a lot of these things aren't necessarily, you know, the one and done answers, like a lot of people have differing opinions on things. I feel when, when what we approach, when we approach these types of inquiries and questions that we're, we're taking uh, a holistic approach to it and we're considering all points and we're opening up the doors to, to other realm possibilities, you know, or realms of possibility, I guess. So it may not be historical, may not be based on fact, but it's based off of experience and, um, maybe our experiences can help uh, inspire you to live your own experiences. Um, I think that's something good to hope for, for, for all of us out here. You know, it's not us telling you how to do the thing or when to do the thing or where to do the thing or what to do specifically. Um, but Hey, this is what we've done. And this is what's kind of, we, we what we've experienced and what's worked. And, uh, that's how I did the thing. Yeah. It were, you know, it worked for him, it worked for me, it worked for us. And maybe it'll be an inspiration to, for something to work for you too. So, um, but yeah, good, good stuff. Um, thank you, Dingo, for shedding some light on it and, and sharing your thoughts too. I know that people oh, genuinely uh, enjoy your involvement and inclusion on it. So <laughs> I'd love to see more of it um, when and oh, as yeah, time allows, time. you know, amongst all of the craziness and the, and the stuff that we just deal with on a, regular basis i appreciate you taking the time to do this so i uh, and i appreciate all of you all of you that are listening watching uh be sure to engage with the podcast in in any way possible like comment share subscribe uh check the show notes in the description for the link tree link for all the ways that you can support the midgard musings uh youtube channel as well as everything that goes into these podcast productions there's merchandise there's patreon there's you know just following, subscribing, and all that stuff does a tremendous deal. So I uh, appreciate everyone's uh, ongoing and constant support. And until the next episode, may the gods continue to walk with you and may your ancestors always smile on you. <laughs>